welcome to AUTCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, we are discussing about the fifth cranial nerve or trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal cranial nerve has got uh, two major parts, that is motor and sensory fibers. The motor fibers uh, supplies the masseter and temporal muscles of the uh, uh, face and sensory part, that, that has got three major parts. One is main sensory that uh, carries the sensation from the face, touch sensation from the face. Mesencephalic nucleus that is uh, carrying the proprioception from the face and uh, mouth. And descending tract of the trigeminal sensory nucleus that is up to uh, C5 it uh, goes. It carries the pain and temperature over the lateral part of the face by lower part of the tract and medial part of the face by upper part of the tract. So it carries the descending tract carries uh, the uh, pain and uh, temperature uh, sensation from the face. It the nucleus uh, extend up to the C2 cervical uh, segment, second uh, cervical segment. So it has got major three nu uh, sensory nucleus, one motor nucleus. Now we'll discuss about sensory part of the trigeminal nerve nucleus. It has got a uh, sensory trigeminal nerve nucleus the largest part of cranial nerve nuclei it extends through the whole of the midbrain pons medulla and ends at the c2 level the sensory dermatome involves the scalp close to the line of the ear to forehead eye cheek and chin mesencephalic nucleus is the uh, is in the midbrain and it receives the proprioceptive fibers from the all muscles of mastication so it carries the proprioceptive sensation from the muscles of mastication and from the mouth to the sensory nucleus there are three parts of the trigeminal sensory nucleus one is mesencephalic nucleus that carries proprioceptive fibers from the cranial nerve 5 arise from the muscles of mastication and the extraocular muscles they terminate in the mesencephalic nucleus this nucleus has connection to even motor nucleus of the cranial nerve 5 then chief sensory nucleus or pontine nucleus or main sensory nucleus or primary nucleus or principal nucleus that, ca that carries the sensation from the face and third one is the spinal trigeminal nerve nucleus these are the three major nucleus then the spinal trigeminal nucleus has got three major parts that is pars oralis pars interpolaris pars uh, caudalis so these are the uh, subsegment of the spinal trigeminal nerve nucleus now we will see the phase distribution uh, phase distribution the upper part of the face is uh, uh, sensation is carried by including the eye sensation is carried by the first division that is v1 division or ophthalmic division of the fifth cranial nerve second part of the face is supplied by uh, ca sensations are carried by maxillary division or v2 division of the trigeminal nerve third part is uh, sensation is carried by mandibular division or v3 division of the fifth cranial nerve sensory uh, nerve nucleus now we'll discuss about motor nucleus uh, there is a distinct trigeminal motor nucleus uh, that uh, that is medial to the chief sensory nucleus it is a motor nerve supply to the muscles of mastication uh, and also it contains proprioceptive fibers to these muscles and motor nucleus is ventromedial to sensory nucleus uh, that lies near to uh, lateral angle of the fourth ventricle and rostral part of the pons and the mesencephalic nucleus has got connection with this motor nucleus now we will see how to examine this motor part of the fifth cranial nerve first we have to examine the masseter and temporal muscles so to do that you can stand behind the patient by both hands you uh, palpate the uh, cheek and temporal part of the patient to palpate the masseter and temporal muscles uh, you ask the patient to bite the uh, bite very hard and you can see the masseter muscles and uh, temporal muscles uh, if there is a weakness of the muscle uh, you can see that part when the patient is biting on uh, that part muscles are very weak comparing to the opposite side and whenever there is a chronic wasting of uh, masseter muscle because of the uh, chronic uh, weakness you can see wasting of the masseter and temporal muscles so stand behind the patient ask the patient to bite hard 
you palpate both side mesenteral muscles and temporal muscles you can compare with the opposite side whether it is strong or weak or wasting is there so that is about palpation of masseter and temporal muscles now we have to examine the pterygoid muscles ask stand uh, stand in front of the patient examiner should stand in front of the patient ask the patient to open their mouth against their resistance so you apply a resistance below the uh, lower part of the mouth and ask the patient to open the mouth against the resistance you can see the patient suppose there is a weakness on one side that uh, whole of the uh, mouth may be deviated to that weaker side weakness cause the jaw to deviate towards the paralyzed side uh, when the patient is trying to open the mouth even you can test the uh, lateral pterygoid by uh, asking asking the patient to move the mouth towards that side suppose there is a weak weakened uh, pterygoid on right side patient will not be deviate the uh, mouth towards right side so either you can ask the patient to open the mouth against the resistance you can see mouth will be deviating to the weaker side in a patient who is having weakness in a normal patient he will be able to open the mouth even if there is a resistant if there is a weakness on the right side mouth will be deviated to the right side you can even test on from sides you can ask the patient to deviate the mouth towards right side if the right side is weak he will not be able to do that this is the testing done for pterygoid muscles next is we have to examine for the sensation of the face we already discussed there are three parts for the sensation v1 v2 v3 for v1 testing you have to test on the forehead you can touch with the cotton wisp on the forehead you can even test the pain uh, temperature all these things like any other dermatome you can test here but ideally it should be done with a cotton wisp you can ask the patient to close the eyes and touch on the forehead if your patient is uh, 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 perceiving that uh, sensation he has to raise his hand and or tell one one so touch on the forehead for v1 segment then touch on v2 segment on the uh, cheeks then lower part of the face for v3 during this examination itself you can ask to, you can do the uh, corneal reflex you can ask the patient to look uh, in a uh, distant place uh, distant object and you can touch on the uh, cornea of one side you can see corneal reflex if the corneal reflex is intact or fifth cranial nerve is intact patient will be blinking both the eyes so here for facial sensation you touch with a light wisp of cotton all the three divisions of trigeminal nerve so forehead v1 cheeks v2 lower part of the face v3 then touch the uh, eyes for corneal reflex so facial sensation should be tested by cotton wisp or finger uh, testing finger touching or you can use uh, a test tube with warm water cold water or a pin prick sensation all these things can be tested but ideally it should be done with a cotton wisp and patient can compare with the opposite side if suppose there is a minimal sensory loss on one side patient may tell uh, i have uh, difficulty in sensing uh, right side uh, there is a minimal reduction from left side that means uh, right side there may be a lesion now corneal reflex we have already uh, uh, discussed the afferent for corneal, corneal reflex is trigeminal uh, ophthalmic division center is in the pons and afferent is facial nerve so if the facial nerve is weak you will not get uh, corneal reflex uh, even a trigeminal nerve weakness uh, you may not get suppose there is a uh, right sided uh, uh, tri trigeminal nerve weakness when you test on the right side you will not get uh, corneal reflex that means patient will not be having any blinking on both side because sensation is not carried to the pons suppose there is a left sided facial nerve weakness when you are testing on the right side you will you can see right side is closing because right side fifth and seventh cranial nerve is normal but left side is not closing because seventh cranial nerve is uh, not normal so in a fifth cranial nerve uh, lesion on one side uh, both side uh, corneal reflex will be ab absent that means when i am testing on the right side where there is a lesion on the right side patient will not be blinking right uh, eyelid and even left eyelid will not be blinking that is about corneal reflex the afferent is trigeminal 
division of the ophthalmic uh, uh, ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve center is pons and efferent is facial nerve now next reflex to be tested in uh, fifth cranial nerve examination is jaw jerk jaw jerk can be elicited by tapping on the apex of the jaw when the patient slightly opens the mouth you can ask the patient to slightly open his mouth you keep the uh, thumb over the lower part of the jaw and slightly uh, ex uh, open the mouth then tap on your finger normally you don't get any response there will not be any jaw jerk at all but in a pseudo bulbar palsy that means a lesion above fifth cranial nerve this jerk will be exaggerated you can see suddenly patient opens his mouth uh, with a, a exaggerated uh, jaw jerk response so normally when you are examining the jaw jerk you may not see any reflex at all but if there is a pseudo bulbar palsy or if there is a lesion above fifth cranial nerve then this has become a umn type of uh, weakness for fifth cranial nerve and suddenly patient opens the mouth uh, the jaw jerk is exaggerated so that is about jaw jerk now we'll discuss about the lesions of fifth cranial nerve uh, le uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, different uh, parts of the fifth cranial nerve nucleus so when there is a lesion in the pons medulla or upper part of the cervical cord up to c2 you can have a uh, fifth cranial nerve lesion so you can it can be a tumor or demyelination vascular lesions syringomyelia syringobulbia syringomyelia and syringobulbia uh, is mainly in the cervical spine so all these lesions fifth cranial nerve can be involved then in lateral medullary syndrome you can get fifth cranial nerve lesion cp angle tumors you can get uh, fifth cranial nerve involvement herpes zoster ophthalmicus you can get fifth cranial nerve involvement with herpes lesion on the face cavernous sinus thrombosis you can get fifth cranial nerve involvement in spinal cord lesions also you can get uh, fifth cranial nerve involvement we have discussed the nucleus can extend up to c2 level so we have uh, discussed about trigeminal nerve examination uh, uh, the motor part of the trigeminal nerve sensory part of the trigeminal nerve reflexes of the trigeminal nerve and the lesions of the trigeminal nerve thank you